There are a lot of people that want to become quants or they want to work in Wall Street. And there's all kinds of things that you need to learn. I think more importantly than anything, you have to have a strong desire to do whatever it is you want to do in life. But in this video, I want to show you a book that actually talks about real mathematical finance. And it's a rare book in the sense that there's not many books that are this good. This one is written by Sheldon Ross. I have another book by Sheldon Ross that I really like. It's on stochastic processes. It's, it's more advanced than this one, um, but it's very good as well. This one is An Elementary Introduction to Mathematical Finance, Options, and Other Topics. I like how it has uh, some money here on the front. This one comes with the dust jacket. Cambridge University Press. It's a good, good publishing company. They actually sent me a book once. Yeah, two books. They actually sent me two free books uh, a long time ago. I don't get a lot of free books. I usually buy all my books, but these people actually sent me two books, so props to them. <laughs> so that's kind of nice. The first, the only big publisher to send me books. So um, this one I paid for. Okay, I bought this book. And then here, let's read a little bit about it. I think this is a fun book. If you, if you really want to learn mathematical finance, this is a really cool book. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. I don't know how much this book costs, but I believe it's worth every penny. I mean, I bought it. <laughs> so, The Mathematical Elementary Introduction to the Theory of Options Pricing, pricing presents the Black-Scholes Theory of Options, as well as such general topics in finance as the time value of money, rate of return of an investment, cash flow sequence, utility functions, and expected utility maximization, mean variance analysis, value at risk, uh, optimal portfolio selection, optimization models, and the capital assets pricing model. Interesting. So some of these things um, appear in uh, certain brokerage firms uh, have some of these tools. Not all brokerages have these tools, but for example, value at risk is something that is calculated for you via software at certain brokerages uh, if you use those. The author assumes no prior knowledge of probability and presents all the necessary preliminary materials simply and clearly in chapters on probability, normal random variables, and the geometric Brownian motion model that underlies the Black-Scholes theory. Yeah, so let's open it up and take a closer look. Let's see, here it talks more about it. it. Talks about Sheldon Ross. This is the second edition. University of California, Berkeley, very legendary school, Berkeley. And then here's the copyright, uh, 2003. So it's been a while. To my parents, Ethel and Luis Ross. Nice book, nice quality pages. I gotta smell it, sorry. Ah, oh, smells really, really good. So it starts with probability, probabilities and events, conditional probability, random variables and expected values. So these, these, are, these are things that aren't specific to finance. So you're gonna learn core stuff in this book covariance and correlation. Then we have normal random variables, continuous random variables, uh, properties of normal random variables, the central limit theorem, and some exercises, geometric Brownian motion. Cool. Interest rates and present value analysis, pricing contracts via arbitrage, the arbitrage theorem, the Black-Scholes formula, then we have some additional results on options. Valuing by expected utility, optimization models, exotic options. Beyond geometric Brownian motion models, autoregressive models, and mean reversion. And there's an index as well. So one of the big cons of this book, and this is probably the biggest con, is that um, there are no answers to the exercises in the back of the book. So that is a big, big con, but it doesn't make it a bad book. The book itself is really good, and I always tell myself, you know what, you're not buying, I'm not buying this book for the exercises, I'm buying it for the knowledge. It's a good reference. Here it gives you a little preface. It says, an option gives one the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell a security under specified terms. So for stocks, usually uh, one option will give the buyer uh, the right to buy or sell 100 shares of a stock. That's how it worked for stocks. Uh, for futures, it's very similar, except it's, it's one contract. Um, that, I don't know if that's as common. People don't usually trade those as much. 
most people trade stock options. Uh, and there's two kinds of options. There's European and American, but that's, well, here it talks about it. Let's keep reading. A call option is one that gives the right to buy, and a put option is one that gives the right to sell. Yep. Both types of options will have an exercise price and an exercise time. In addition, there are two standard conditions under which options operate. European options can only be utilized at the exercise time, or often called at, at expiration, so on expiration day. So if it expires, let's say, May 15th, that's when you can exercise your option on May 15th. Whereas American options can be utilized at any time up to exercise time. So American options are a little bit different. Um, so any time up to exercise time, the holder of that option can choose to exercise it. So they can choose to buy or sell uh, the stock or the futures contract. Thus, for, for instance, a European call option with exercise price K and time T gives its holder the right to purchase at time T one share of the underlying security for price K. Now, here it says one share. In practice, it's 100 shares, okay, uh, like in, in, in the U.S. stock market. Whereas an American call option uh, gives its holder the right to make the purchase at any time before or after time T. So that's the only difference is when you can exercise uh, between European and American. But again, for stocks, it's usually 100 shares. It says, a prerequisite for a strong market in options is a computationally efficient way of evaluating at least approximately their worth. This was accomplished for call options of either American or European type by the famous Black-Scholes equation. I believe these people, you know, they won the Nobel Prize for this. The formula assumes that prices of the underlying security follow a geometric Brownian motion. And it goes on and talks uh, more about that there. Let's just skip all that and go to the beginning. That gives a kind of like an overview. Um, if you're not familiar with mathematical finance or options, that might seem a little bit heavy. Um, it, it, options take a little bit, a little while to get used to. I've been in the markets for, uh, wow, almost 15 years now. So I have a lot of experience with it. So it's different. And honestly, it's like math, right? The more you read something, the more math you do, the better you get. The same thing with finance. So probabilities and events. Consider an experiment and let S, called the sample space, be the set of all possible outcomes of the experiment. That's typically what books use for the sample space. So, for example, if you were to roll a six-sided die uh, one time, the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. So it would be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So you have six possible outcomes uh, when you roll a six-sided die. If there are m possible outcomes of the experiment, then we will generally number them from 1 through m, and so s is equal to the set, right, containing the numbers 1 through m. However, when dealing with specific examples, we will usually give more descriptive names to the outcomes. Yeah, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Here's a simple one, just a flipping a coin. Let the experiment consist of flipping a coin, and let the outcome be the side that lands face up. Thus, the sample space of this experiment is s equals, so h represents heads, and T represents tails, where the outcome is H if the coin shows heads, and T if it shows tails. If the experiment consists of rolling a pair of dice, with the outcomes being the pair IJ, where I is the value that appears on the first die, and J is the value on the second, then the sample space consists of the following 36 outcomes, right? You have 36 possible outcomes. There's six ways for the first die to land, six ways for the second die to land, the number of ways they can land together is the product 6 times 6, which is 36, by the multiplication rule. Or you can list all of them out as they've done here. And they continue with examples. And here's some actual examples where they compute probabilities. They talk about complements. Conditional probability. So it's a very clean book. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of spacing. I feel like it's a good book to work from. Um, it's good for beginners if you have desire and willpower to get better at probability, I think this is a solid approach uh, for anyone who wants to actually learn like mathematical statistics with a, with a big emphasis on, on finance, right? You're going to have topics here that you typically won't find in a regular mathematical statistics book like the one by Rice or the one by Wackerly and Mendelhall. Those are great books and they have tons of content that this book doesn't have. But this one has a focus on, again, on finance. And it, this book has great exercises, as you can see. It's got really good problems. And it is a shame that there are no answers. I don't know if there's a solution manual available. Oh, this is cool. Look at this. 
There's a reference. He talks about a first course in probability by Ross. I also own that book, and that is an excellent book uh, for beginners. So yeah, just a really nice book. With it's got a lot of examples, even though it doesn't give you, um, you know, answers to the exercises. It does give you lots of examples. It reads well. It's very, very correct. Um, it's written by a reputable author. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know everything that's in this book. I just know some of the content. Um, I studied uh, stochastic processes in grad school. I used the book by Ross. And I've taken a few courses on mathematical statistics. So I know most of the stuff, and I'm really familiar with the finance stuff. But great book. Uh, I've been enjoying it so far. I've had it for a while. I read it from time to time. And um, yeah, I like it. I just wanted to show it to you here in this video in case you're looking for something that you can use to learn mathematical finance. Now, it talked about how there's no prereqs, you know, but like, you know, it does use some calculus. You see there's a partial derivative here. Um, so, you know, the more math you know, the better. But you can see at the beginning, you know, it just, you just need to be able to read and have uh, a certain level of, of mathematical maturity and the desire to learn. But yeah, that's it. If you found any value in this content, hit subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. And if you want to learn mathematics, I have courses. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, but if you get them, please use my links, either from the description of any of my videos or from my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. They're on Udemy and they're great. I've got tons of math courses that can help you learn math. I hope it's been helpful as always. Keep doing mathematics.